Well, here I am uh, around about tea time uh, on a rain swept Friday in April, and uh, delighted to be in the house, the haven of Mr. and Mrs. Arthur. And uh, I'm about to interview Maureen. And um, Maureen, it's up to you whether you want to give your date of birth to um, set things in context. Well, I was born on the 22nd of June, 1938, at um, in a bungalow. Uh, which was then called Springfield, at the bottom of Gastrell's Hill. And um, so, um, what are your first memories you know, when you look back? What can you remember as your first memories of living in Robra? Well, um, I was one and a bit when war started, so really my earliest memories are all connected with the war, or a lot of them are. I can remember as a toddler standing outside the back door at Gastrels, uh, listening to the aircraft, the bombers going overhead. And um, I can remember the first experience of that. I was very frightened and cri I cried. And I think we went down to our cellar. And um, thereafter, I think my father came to the conclusion that um, they weren't after us. They were heading for Coventry or somewhere like that. And um, I ask you about that. So, um this will be in the Blitz then, so you can remember you, you, that was well, such it, a strong memory. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yes, it was uh, one of my earliest memories really, because it was, uh, you sensed your parents' anxiety, and so you, I suppose you felt their fear really. Yeah, because yeah, yes. I remember Peter Whisson, who uh, was an evacuee, and he ended up at Eastington from South London, and he told me once that... Um, from out there, he could see the sky red. You know, out yes, the well, you could come up here to my my grandparents lived here, or up on the common, and you could see the red glow in the sky. And I remember my parents saying that that was Bristol burning. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just carry on there. Anything else to talk mm -hmm. about? Uh, I mean, I can remember the searchlights in uh, in the fields at the farm, and there were two farms in those days, of course, in Kingscourt Lane, um, the plough field. Uh, which is the field going up towards the church um, because uh, you know lots of potatoes and things like that were grown in those days and the cows in the field that's one of my earliest memories um, because our house was uh, there were fields on either side of our house and um, the cows grazed in one field and the cart horses in the other and um, the, the farm boys uh, used to live up here at Little London and they would come up and down the field uh, regularly, you know, morning, noon and evening and the cows went home for milking twice a day and they all had names like Daisy and Buttercup and Bluebell and I believe those names are still over the stalls round in the farmyard in Kingscourt Lane. Oh really? I wonder. Yes, I've yeah. talked to Jonathan Daniels and he says uh, uh, the names are still there now. Right, uh, that's a lovely, mm. lovely, lovely story. Um, any, any more to say before we move to the end of the Second World War? Um, well, I can remember um, the air raid warnings, mm -hmm. and um, you know, you didn't go out until the all clear had sounded. I can remember the blackout, of course. I remember the blackout going up and the sort of scurry to get it put up. That's been quite difficult, you know, around mm -hmm. in the country areas like this with the blackout to find mm -hmm. your way around. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, well, it was, and when we came, uh, we went into Stroud sometimes to the cinema. Um, I suppose my mother used to take me with her, and um, coming home on the bus, it was so inky black. You had no idea where. You had to count the stops from the town. You counted all the stops so that you knew where you were. Uh, because the drivers weren't always very helpful and they didn't always tell you, you know. No, or perhaps know the routes. That's, yeah. that's right, yeah. Um, well, as I remember going to King's Court School, uh, which I believe was 1941, uh, to be fitted out for gas masks, you know, the little Mickey Mouse, the pink rubber Mickey Mouse yeah, gas mask. Right, yeah. And my mother used to um, play games with me so that I wouldn't be frightened at wearing that because it was very smelly and very tight and... Uh, Yes. Um. It's quite fascinating to, to, to me the number of people I've interviewed born around about the same time as you, Maureen, and, and, and um, I think Tony Andrews and uh, George Evans um, stick out in my mind as men, but, but you've had the, the, the clearest recall on the war years as, uh, as a girl, right? Well, I think I was quite an impressionable child, really, and um, um, I think I just... Um, 
I was always with my parents because I was so small. I was always there in their company, you know, and yeah. so... Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So, um, where, where, do we, where should we go now? Do you want to talk about your school days? Or, like, maybe up to you. My school days, well, I started in 1943 at um, King's Court, the old King's Court School. And, and there was just one classroom in operation. There was so three. Is that the one near the pub? Is that the one in the Down here, the, 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 down Bowl Hill. Yeah, the old, yeah, yeah, so that was in use as a school. <clears throat> yes, yeah. there was just one classroom in use, yeah. <clears throat> and all ages up to seven. Uh, were taught in the same room by Miss Alice Wilkinson and uh, she had been there a long time she was a pupil teacher when my father was at school right. and he left in 1922 right. yeah, <laughs> and um, we did lovely things like nature walks and um, it was the building was quite old and dusty I suppose and drab by today's standards and all the equipment was very very old we learned to do our first letters in sand trays and paper was very short everything was short during the war and that's a, another clear memory of the shortages of everything mm -hmm. you know yes and we, but we used everything our drinking straws were actually straws oh, they were see. straws yeah, and we yeah. washed them under the cold tap dried them and put them back in our desks yeah, uh, yeah. for use next that's day yeah. um, what about the uh, the changes in the buildings and the landscape? Perhaps you want to talk about that for a bit now. Well, um, we've lost a lot of our green fields. There's all these houses you see in front of you. That was all green fields uh, when I was a girl. Um, you know, things like haymaking around here now, are, it's a thing of the past, but mm. the children used to get involved in that, of course. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, um, the traffic, the amount of traffic, of course, is terrific now. We, as children, we always played out, and we played in the road, and your mother would just call out, don't forget, the bus will be round in a minute. Uh, the milk van came quite early in the morning. Uh, in the afternoon, we had a delivery of milk in a horse and cart by mi a Mr. Joel. I'm not sure where he came from, but somewhere local. And apart from the baker and the bus, that was really, literally, the only mm -hmm. traffic. So we played out with whips and tops and hoops and yes. skipping ropes and French cricket, all in the middle of the road, right. <laughs> of the lane. Did you girls play with boys? I often uh, yes, sometimes we did, yes, and things like hide and seek. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, we did quite a lot. The Congress um, was a boys' game, was it? I was um, and yes, well, mostly I think. And the boys, um, they did sort of uh, play in gangs. Sometimes they would disappear to a neighbour's attic to play Monopoly. My brother had a, a game of Monopoly, and they would That's disappear. Sweet, yes, they would, it would go quietly. Sometimes they would go off scrogging. They would go um, across. Um, to the orchards um, off Walkley Hill, which right. used to belong to uh, Sir Alfred Appley, and there were some lovely apples there called Red Dicks, and they were pink inside, you know. And so uh, where, where, no, sorry to interrupt. Where, that's just that orchard. Um, that's. Um, um,